that led to him actually playing Deadpool in X-Men Origins Wolverine, which was one of the first Fox X-Men movies that was universally hated. X-Men The Last Stand was divisive, but this movie was just universally hated, and what was truly hilarious was the kind of general consensus towards X-Men Origins Wolverine was, can we get a do-over? It wasn't, this movie sucks, I don't want to see anything that looks like this movie ever again. It was like, can you please just redo this? And so, of course, they redid it. We got the Wolverine. And again, people, eh, it's not as bad as the last one, but could you please do this again? And then we finally got Logan. That was awesome. But one of the biggest crimes against the fandom that X-Men Origins Wolverine is guilty of was the way he portrayed Deadpool. They completely got the character wrong. They got the perfect actor to play him, but they got the character completely wrong. And that was something that you did sit right with the fan. It was something that was always one of the major bullet points when complaining about that movie. But what was beautiful about that incident is that it didn't deter Ryan Reynolds from trying to do it again, to redo it, to get his do it. Uh, so he bothered Fox for years to let him make a proof of concept, a computer animated short, showing that what a dead thing could be like. And Fox wouldn't budge, and Apparently, the person that finally got them to concede and give them give them the money to make to produce this proof of concept was none other than Hugh Jackman. Hence the joke at the beginning of the third Deadpool movie, where he says, you know, "You're not going to be able to guess who I have to bundle in order to make this happen. I'll give you a clue. He's got a pair of smooth criminal down under. And about Hugh Jackman. So Hugh Jackman has always been a part of this narrative, even." before these movies happen. So they make the proof of concept, they show it to Fox, and Fox turns it down. Now, everybody who hears the story always thinks, oh, Fox, they're idiots. No, Fox is a company, and by all indications, big budget R-rated movies are career suicide. They are a prelude to fail, right? Because a big budget movie is a big audience. Rated, you're limiting the number of people that can go see the movie. All right, so it's easy to throw Fox under the bus, but if you stop and think about it, it makes sense why they would be so apprehensive about making this movie. So, of course, famously, the proof of concept, the Deadpool short, leaked on the internet. Uh, to this day, I can theorize that it was Ryan Reynolds himself who leaked it, and I'm sure if you're theorizing that, then you are right. And of course, it went viral, and millions and millions of people saw it, proving that this franchise had an audience. That finally tipped the, the domino and started the domino effect that led into this insanely awesome trilogy of movies. Um, and of course, the first dead one comes out, it's massively successful, the second highest grossing animated movie of all time, only second to Passion of the Christ. So, of course, there's a sequel, and of course, that's massively successful. Didn't make as much as the first movie, but it still did really, really well. Furthermore, they re edited that movie, they did a PG 13 version, released that, and that made a ton of cash as well. So, we knew that it was only a matter of time before there was a third movie. And even before the first movie came out, it was constantly teased that uh, potentially one of these movies would include Deadpool meeting Wolverine. It's just one of the most iconic characters in comics. It's like peanut butter and jelly. It just it makes sense. And on top of that, there are there are references after references after references to Hugh Jackman and Wolverine throughout those first two movies. This was always in the 80s. This was 
always part of the mythology of this movie, these movies, even before they started. But of course, the big, big monkey wrench in the works, the, the spanner in the machine, was that in Logan, at the end of that movie, spoiler alert, excuse me, if you haven't seen Logan, go watch Logan, it's awesome. But at the end of that movie, If you want to send some stuff to me so I can check out what you have sent, please send it to this exact address. However, you may only send some stuff that I am interested in. No airplane, okay? Because if you send something like this, I will make sure that I will tell you that I do not like this film at all. So make sure you send stuff like this, or this, or this, or this. And yes, even Airplane 2 the sequel. Oh, and get this, a special collector's edition of Twister, complete with a steelbook that features not only the secondary poster artwork, but the image 
of the pipe scene on the back! Heck yeah, I'm getting this! Uh, excuse me, we actually did get an edition of Twister, which has this cover. But by god, I just want that special collector's edition so damn much! And also Airplane 2, the sequel, which has this cover. Just look at those nuts! I can't keep up with them all! And even the one in the original theatrical poster! Like, look at it! And just look at this poster for the worst film of all time! I mean, come on, do they really need to tie that plane up into another? I mean, that part never actually happened in the film! I mean, they clearly just used a toy model plane! Like, come on, really? And yes, this is what the plane actually looks like in the film! And here's another image of that same goddamn plane model, also from the film. God damn it, I hate this film. And it's different titles, like this one known as Flying High, but I would refer to the film with this title. I just hated it so much. So make sure you send in to this address and I hope to God I will look at them. And in the words of the good old immortal named Connor McLeod, there can be only one.